Thank uh, you. Just absolutely privileged to have you both here. Mm -hmm. You remarked before you rush off from here to go back into rehearsal for the petition. Mm -hmm. How do you two still deal with the remarkably heavy work of rehearsals? She's laughing and he's looking very serious indeed. By the seat of my pants. <laughs> <laughs> How do we deal with it? Not, yeah. not very well. It's but hard we keep work. trying. It's hard work. <clears throat> it is hard work. Yes, yeah. yes. But, the, but you have to keep trying to do better, do better. And uh, that's what we are still trying to do, just make it perfect. Tell us briefly about the petition, because it's a two person show, the two of you on stage. Endurance is required. <laughs> Hume, tell me a little bit. I, I have to say to everybody, I call them Hume and Jessica with, with a touch at of our, diffidence at, at our your request. request. Yes. So <clears throat> tell us a little bit Just about so the we petition. don't get above ourselves. <laughs> the petition is, I think, essentially a love story. It's the examination of a marriage that's lasted over 50 years. Uh, the, the author's metaphor, which I don't think is immediately obvious to a great number in the audience and is utterly unimportant, although important to him, is that just as individuals who live together have to learn to cope with one another's differing opinions and uh, sometimes abrasive viewpoints, nations too have to learn to do that, that the world has shrunk to such an extent that what happens in Nicaragua, the Philippines, uh, the Far East, name it, anywhere in the world, affects us right here in Boston. Be sure. um, and uh, we, we, if we don't learn to respect even those opinions of others which are repugnant, uh, it's very difficult to maintain a communication. And without communication, we're in dire trouble. You know, one thing that I, I read, Hume, and maybe Jessica ought to clarify this. Did I read, is it correct that you are talking about quitting? You, wanna, you said you <laughs> want to go out with a bang, obviously referring to the T.S. Eliot uh, poem, rather, rather than, than a whimper. whimper. You are <laughs> seriously, the two of you, considering, or does he always speak well, no, like that? No, well, I'm the, well, I'm the Cassandra of the one. Do you, do you, do you know uh, the, the A.A. Milne yes. stories, yes. Winnie the Pooh? Yes. Well, they call me on the set Eeyore. Yes. So, I mean, that gives you a picture. <laughs> so you are not quitting. I'm not. No, no, no it's no, not no, no. that. No, it's just that, that, that I, I seem to have a real affinity for gloom, whereas Jesse, <laughs> bless her, uh, has, uh, uh, is very positive in her thinking and, and uh, maddeningly cheerful. Uh, 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 so uh, what, what you were asking about was, was quitting. I, I think, for me at least, I don't know what the lady is going to do, but this is certainly the last two-character play that I will attempt. The strain is enormous. Um, and in this particular play, which has, um, <coughs> I think, a rather complex syntax, uh, and for me, playing an Englishman, and attempting to play an Englishman of a very specific class and caste, uh, I have to. There, there are a lot of there are a lot of problems involved. There's a great deal to think about. I mean, on our last day of rehearsal with the director, who blessedly went away over the weekend, uh, and he's a wonderful director, marvelous director, Sir Peter Hall. Uh, I had 20 notes and five cuts to you try to digest. Lots that means of work. there are 25 hurdles in the performance, which say, "Oh, here it comes. Here's a change." Here's, you know, it takes, it takes more concentration than at age 75. I'm really prepared to give it. It's just too damn hard work, that's all. The question was, are we going to retire or not? Is that right? That, of course, is not and good for you, And I think it's Jessica. very dangerous ever to say never, that you're never going to do anything again. And I think that at this age, one has to think very carefully about uh, what you do, not do it just for the sake of doing something, but only do something that you feel you must must do because it is it is a much greater strain on you when you are our age. It's, it's harder to learn. One's energies aren't quite as much. You have to really live a monastic life so that you have the energy in the evening. 
So it's, I'm not going to ever say never, I'm never going to do anything again. I'm not, I, I'm with her. Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying that. Best you be, Mr. Cook. I, I, <laughs> yeah, right. we're, we're not going to leave the business. I mean, I, we will we'll, we'll do films and television, perhaps other plays. Let, let me, I, yeah. I'm just talking about the specific okay. nature of this particular play. I want to, I'm dying to ask the two of you, married for, for all these years, 40, 45 years, um, is there competition? What happens if he gets a great part and Jessica is out of part? If he gets a great part, that's some... wonderful. I, it doesn't, it's no skin off my nose because I couldn't play it. <laughs> See, you we're not in one, competition. You don't that. threaten one another. No, no, no. Not no. a bit. No, and he certainly and, can't play my part. And, <laughs> I, I never have. Are, have you ever been competitive with one another? I don't think so. I don't have think we? so. Really? No, you, one has to compliment one another. Let me ask about Cocoon. The reason I want to ask about Cocoon is, I think you, you were quoted as saying Hollywood was looking around for some old, what, what did I write now, just some old Rex sitting around. That's what you, that's what I that's read, what you I had said. said well, I'm, I'm given to hyperbole. <laughs> <laughs> or low perbole, is it? <laughs> no, we'd just done a very successful play, which some of your audience will have seen, called The Gin Game. Sure. It was also on television. Yes. And so we were natural candidates for this film. I won't go into it. Those people who have seen the film will know what I'm talking about. A lot but, of people have seen the film. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people have seen yeah. the film. And uh, we were with a wonderful company. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, it was, uh, it was it, that element of it was great fun to do. As for the rest of it, getting up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning, which I did regularly, to spend 12 to 15 hours on a set day after day in August and September on the Gulf Coast of Florida is not my idea of a treat. But that's part of the job. I mean, that's not, it's, it's, uh, so I don't know what I said and under what circumstances, whatever you quoted me about, but, uh... You don't it, mean 12 to 15 hours on the set. Oh, I do indeed. No, you don't. I you certainly cannot, do. We couldn't have done it. You, you couldn't have been on there from 7 in the morning to 7 at night. We or, often were. Uh, or to 10 at night. 50, that's 15 hours. You, your uh, arithmetic is wrong. You mean I'm exaggerating? Yeah, it's oh, teeny how bit. unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you clearly have worked together before. <laughs> Let me remind everybody that this extraordinary couple is at the Wilbur. The, the play is called The Petition. You may see it there, and I hope that you will get to it. It is there through April the 12th. It is Broadway bound. We don't know the theater. Opens the 24th. If you miss it in Boston, you can catch it in yes, New York. Yes, we do know the theater. It's the Golden. The Golden Theater. There you are, the Golden <laughs> Theater. Hume Cronin and Jessica Tanny. What a delight to meet you both. Thank you very Thank much. You. Stay Thanks with us a long time. If you had us on longer, we would have, we would have really tangled. <laughs> would you, would you, well, stay. Maybe. Who knows where it'll go to? We'll take a break. Be up back with much more of Good Day in just a moment. Thank you both very, very much. And when we return, the color, the culture, and the cuisine of India.